What's up guys and welcome to today's video. I'm going to be talking about some Chia misconceptions, uh, explaining plotting a little bit and kind of going through how Chia coin works compared to like a Bitcoin. So first things first, Chia versus Bitcoin. Is one really greener than the other? Well, yeah, technically right now Chia is way more efficient than Bitcoin because an ASIC for Bitcoin mining guzzles thousands of watts, uh, usually 1,000 to 2,000 or higher, depending on which one you have, how new it is, etc., etc. And Chia uses, well, less than 1,000 watts for a full system because uh, hard drives don't use that much power. But if we continue and continue to expand, eventually I could see this. Uh, not overtaking Bitcoin, but getting to the point where it is a large amount of power. Personally, I could care less how much power it uses because most of the power that is being used to mine Chia and Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is actually renewable power and it helps incentivize us to transition faster as we need more and more power. We'll have to find better ways to power ourselves and recently, renewable resources are the cheapest way to power our grid. So that would only increase our reliance on renewable resources and uh, help us spread to the point where like electricity gets so cheap that it, it doesn't affect us on a day-to-day -day basis as it does now. Secondly, Chia coin, uh, you can't really mine Chia coin. Chia coin is plotted and farmed. Bitcoin is where you sub a bunch of hashes and send it to the pool or the network in hopes of winning the block. Whereas Chia, it, it's like a lottery system. Every plot is a lottery ticket and holding that ticket on your hard drive guarantees that one day you, well, I shouldn't say guarantees, but one day your ticket will come due and you will win your Chia. Now, the more tickets there are, the lower the chance of that individual ticket winning, but eventually one plot, I think right now is about 20 years. So if you got one plot in 20 years or 40 years or longer, one day you might win Chia. So, you know, plot as much as possible, it increases your odds. But I've seen a lot of people asking me, hey man, um, I plotted to my hard drive. Can I delete it? Can I format my hard drive? Like, do I need to keep this space? What do I need to do? Where do I move this? Uh, I plotted to one destination. Can I move it to another? These are great questions. Uh, if you make a plot, don't delete it because you have to do it all over again then. Your plot has to stay on your hard drive as long as you intend to mine Chia. If you decide, hey man, Chia is not for me. I did this whole thing, it was kind of cool. Uh, just did it for fun, but I want my drive space back. Go ahead, format your drives. Not a problem, you can, you can format, you can delete, whatever you wanna do. But if you wanna retain the ability to win Chia in the future, you need to keep those plots on your hard drive with the computer turned on, um, which is another topic. Can you turn off the computer or can you unplug the drives after they're plotted? Yeah, you can unplug them, but you won't win anything because you need to have the hard drives powered on and connected to the internet in order to win. If you have a lottery ticket and you don't get to the place that gives you your lottery ticket in time, they usually give it to somebody else. The same thing happens in Chia. If your hash wins or your lottery ticket wins in Chia, but you're not there to say, hey, I have that lottery ticket. You don't get it. Um, I know it sucks, right? You're thinking you might be able to put a bunch of hard drives somewhere and just hopefully get Chia because you made that hash. Well, unfortunately, that's not how it works. So you need to keep your hard drives on. You need to keep the plot file on the hard drive at all times, but you can move the plot. And that is not a problem as long as the place you're moving it to the farmer knows about. So if you plot to a solid state and you don't use the final destination setting in the plotting software, you can move it once, once it's done, hits 100% and finalizes, you can copy that plot and paste it somewhere else. Or better, cut that plot and paste it somewhere else because 
Another point, you cannot just copy plots and put them wherever you want. You can't clone plots. Every plot is unique and is an individual plot. If you make 1,000 copies of the same plot, it is the same lottery ticket. Is it like if you went and got a scratch off ticket, right? You scratch it off and you don't win. If you copy that a thousand times, you're still not going to win. Um, it's just going to be basically a photocopy of the same ticket that you have. So do not copy. I've seen a bunch of people do this. Uh, they messaged me on Instagram about it and they filled up a one terabyte drive and I felt so bad because they spent a bunch of time doing it. Do not copy your plot files to the same hard drive over and over again, filling it up. That you, it's not a way that you can win or cheat the system, unfortunately. You have to make every plot. They're all unique and all individual plots need to be represented if you want to win. So other than that, a couple of other questions I've got is um, how do you mine Chia? Well, Chia is actually farmed. You can't mine it. You have to plug it into a computer with a hard drive and fill it up. Um, the hard drive doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter if it's a solid state or a hard drive or a SD card or a USB drive. It, Chia Network doesn't care where your lottery ticket is as long as that lottery ticket is ready and available when it comes time to uh, win the block, right? You, you pass the filter as they call it. Well, what, what's the filter? Um, well, Chia had this interesting like design theory that they did when they made Chia coin uh, to help it be even greener. So to use less power, you don't want your hard drives constantly spinning, right? You want to have them spin down because they use basically no electricity when they're turned off. But the problem is when you need to check the drive for those specific files, you need to turn on the drive for a second. Um, but the, uh, the filter basically takes all of your plots and compares it against the plot that's supposed to win. The plot that's gonna win will have like the first eight digits will be the exact same as your plots. And if they match, if those two first eight digits match, your hard drive will spin up and the Chia network will look at that plot file and determine whether or not it's the winning plot. If it doesn't win, unfortunately, the hard drive can go back to idling. Um, now, unfortunately, my drives for the system that I built are always spinning, and that's because I'm always dumping plots into them. But hopefully, once I'm done plotting those drives, they can spin down or spin to a slower speed that uses less electricity, and then spin up just to check what files I have on there. They do have a cache with a list of files, so hopefully that helps. The, uh, the nicer enterprise drives usually have a bigger cache, so it means it can store more data and, and whatnot, but that goes on beyond the, the point. Another question that a user asked me is, if one plot is made and you make it on your solid state, how much space does it take up on your hard drive? Well, it takes up the exact same amount of space. You see, when you make the plot file, it takes roughly anywhere from like 200 to 260 gigabytes of temporary storage because it makes a bunch of files. During the plotting process, when making the files is done, it'll eventually get to the point where it compresses the files. And then that turns into like a 105 gigabyte file from like a 220 to 250 gigabyte file, meaning the temporary space is given back after the plot is done. And then in the software, usually, if you set the final destination and the original destination, it'll, or the temporary destination, it'll work everything over here. And when it's done, it'll compress it, and then it'll move it over here into your hard drive and then delete it from here. So when you're done making a plot, you actually don't have to go back to your temporary drive and delete anything because it does it automatically. You just have to worry about not running out of space in your temporary drive compared to your final destination. So you make a plot, it goes to the temp. When it's done, it goes to the destination and clears off the temp, which means you can then 
throw another plot in and continue the process over and over again until your drives are filled. Um, that's most of the questions that I've got so far, but if you guys have questions, let me know down in the description below and I will try to answer them as fast as possible or if a whole flurry of questions come in and misconceptions and a bunch of things that I see going on, uh, maybe I'll make another video about it, but I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Like I said, if you have any questions, please, bleh, please feel free to link it down in the description below. You guys are awesome.